the stream up so that I can be toxic in chat. Hey, welcome to the community meta where Mighty Blue is going to continue talking after we got the signal as he's looking away. I'm Morg, and I've already introduced Mighty Blue. Do you want to jump in, <laughs> Blue, and yeah, tell yeah. us about yourself? Hi. Hello. My name is Mighty Blue Justice on the internet, amongst other things. Uh, I, I, I play video games a bunch, and that's more or less it. Um, I come to, so my understanding is our podcast here is going to be more or less rambling about community as it interacts with games to some degree. Or entirely, I presume, hence it being called the community meta. Uh, and I know, right? Crazy. <laughs> um, so my experience with um, community comes from um, I've done quite a lot of outdoor education um, in, and uh, team building stuff, usually building groups of like about, uh, you know, between like 10, 15 people at a time, how to work in bigger groups and all that sort of jazz. Um Regarding video games specifically, I, I, like everybody, ran a World of Warcraft guild and um, until uh, from release up until about uh, Wrath. <clears throat> and then after, after uh, a great big hiatus there, I actually started a, um, a planetside community. Uh, we started in about 2012 when the game came out uh, and we are uh, one of the one of the longest uh, contiguous groups um, from Australia that the um, that Planetside's got, uh, if that makes sense. Like it's mostly been the same people the entire time. We haven't had big fractures or uh, guild dramas or anything like that. Drama free. Uh, <laughs> well, we like to think drama free. I think you can't you, you can't ever not have drama on the internet. But uh, our dramas are like actual personal dramas, not like. You know, oh no, he coloured in between the wrong lines. That's a paddling. <laughs> you know? Yeah, dr drama usually comes with community. Every community manager is yeah. going to strive for a drama-free community, but yeah. in reality, people are. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it doesn't ultimately. happen. But you you can kind of you can kind of prune it a little bit so that you're sort of selecting the kind of people who will bring the kind of drama that you don't mind dealing with. <laughs> If that makes sense, it's like you sort yeah. of find the problems that you like solving and you try to surround yourself with those problems rather than like, oh, no, yeah, another you, bloody you, this thing. It's sort of just through your community guidelines and cherry picking the mm. types of people you want in your community. Yeah, well, that's that. I mean, that's just one approach to community. I guess that's my preferred one is quality over quantity. But uh, tell us about yourself, Morg. What are the, you know, what's uh sort of adventures do you get up to when it comes to hanging out with groups of people and arguing about video games on the internet or in real life? Well, uh, I guess my journey in community started about 10 years ago. Um, like a few teenage boys, I <laughs> got involved with Minecraft mod uh, moderation uh, and uh, sort of fell in love with the idea of um, fostering a welcoming community and um, sort of building things together. Um, sort of from there, uh, I dabbled in a, a few things like an Overwatch um, Pog server. Um, but the real uh, love of the of the craft came from um, when I was vice president of a esports club at my university, uh, Murdoch University. Um, so I got a a taste of both uh, in real life community building and also uh, combining that with a, a mixed. Um, approach with obviously uh, it was an esports club and gaming so um the virtual side as well uh from there i also um co-founded the murdoch it society again and had to grow a community from uh zero people up to 250 students within the first year and um that steadily grew from there um mm -hmm. after i stepped down uh, and then uh, more recently, I uh, came on board as the community manager at Game on Oz. And um, as, if people have been around in the community, uh, I've just been running a few events and, and just trying to get some structure um, happening within uh, the organization. So that's a, a quick, brief intro to me. Mm -hmm. um, so the topic we're dwelling into, I would say, is the, the concept between casual and sweaty yeah <laughs> it's quite a it's a big one to start off with i think because we uh i didn't think it was and then i actually thought about it. i was like oh no 
<laughs> now we're gonna now we're gonna make everybody mad no um so i'll guess i'll well, st- uh i ramble a little bit at first if you're okay with that yeah for sure ramble yeah, away cool. i'm oh, yeah oh, i'm all good. ears oh, i love a good <laughs> rambling <All> right <laughs> tied an onion on my belt as was the style at the time no uh so regarding the so casual and sweaty it's a big kind of uh thing that you see around on the internet everyone loves to call everybody else the other thing the one they think they are or vice versa um there's a lot of different uh there's a lot of different uh kind of definitions i guess which sounds silly it's just two words um but people use them in different contexts uh and i think they kind of they are a little bit representative of some values that people can hold when they approach gaming in general uh, but what can kind of happen is people on the other side would probably like kind of project what they think the other people are if that makes sense so um Sorry, I've gone a bit rambly. So <clears throat> as far as the quote unquote definitions come, you've got like your casuals, right? That can that can apply to a lot of different things. Do you actually have enough time to play the games? Like the just playtime itself can be a reference to are you casual, are you are you sweaty? Um but you also get some of it can come down to mindset. Like uh, the general thing, I guess, is the casuals are just out to have fun and don't really care about winning or playing the objective. They just want to insta lock Hanzo um, or whatever things that want to, people want to sort of push on them. Um, and then there was another one for casual, but I've forgotten it. And I'm sure I'll wake up late at night screaming it into the dark. <laughs> Uh, and then on the other side where the sweaty sort of comes in is I think it, it kind of got started. People started using it around like Fortnite, if I remember rightly. Um, it was kind of a bit of a perjurative uh, in the sense of, ah, oh, look at these sweaty kids. They're trying really hard. And it's basically like the modern version of calling someone a try hard um, in that sort of sense. But it does kind of it also does kind of reflect that sometimes when people come home to play games, right, you get the different attitudes. Um, where and people who might fall under that definition of sweaty are the ones who are likely to be enjoying games as like a vector for the self improvement feelings, right? Like, so I could go to the gym, or I could get a four KD. Am I right? Like, which one's easier? Um, the gym. Going to the gym. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you also get. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but whereas on the side of the casual thing, like you, it, the, um, it's a bit muddled as well because different games are considered diff- like just straight up, oh, this is a casual game, whereas you don't really get people go, oh, this is a sweaty game. Um, I guess people would say it's more like a high-octane or competitive or intense game. Um, but with the, the casual one, it's you know arguably more so to be the kind of people um, or the mindset where like you got a bit of sp- you got a bit of time to kill. You're just after some dopamine. You're not really um, as discerning um, as to where it comes from uh, when compared with the the sweaty players. Like the sweaty ones tend to they'll like a part of a game and then they'll really push for that part of the game. They might get the mastery and things like that. But as you get better and better and better and better. Um, it can be sometimes it can be harder to remember what you liked about the game in the first place that actually got you there. So you end up like at the top of the mountain, um, and you sort of forgotten what was at the bottom that you really liked, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, and so you, okay, good, good. Whew, I'm not just, I'm <laughs> not just, I'm not a crazy man shouting at clouds. You're not crazy. You're fine. <laughs> um, and then. Yeah, and so then the casual side of it, you, uh, the uh, the um, theory can be put forward that it's like it's a bit more so about, hey man, I'm just after some, I'm after some of those good feelings, uh, and that can be, you know, that can either be um, if you just just happen to like how a game is put out, or some sometimes games these days are a little bit more um, manipulative in some areas as to uh, how they hit you with that dopamine stuff, like a lot of the looter shooters um, and the Diablo loot sort of games are really big on that. Um, and that's fine too. And I think the only weirdness uh, that kind of comes is when when both sides kind of clash, if that makes sense. Yeah, which is um, pretty easy when you're uh, queuing games on like Counter Strike or Valorant, where those oh, sort of yeah. team games where yeah, uh, exactly. You don't get to cherry pick your teammates mm. if you're just play, playing um, solo queuing, etc. Yeah, yeah, it can be really um 
really awkward there. Am I mostly, do you think I've mostly hit the mark with these sort of Yeah, no, 100%. Definitions? Have you got anything to add? Bullseye. No, you oh. summed up both definitions perfectly. Uh, I think the, the general issue with, if we tie this back to the podcast community meta, the issue with trying to foster these communities is you sort of have to pick which one you're going to cater to. You're going to cater to mm. the casuals or you're going to cater to the uh, more mm. sweaty, uh, competitive um, gamers, as you would say. <laughs> <laughs> the Well, because that was a thing in like a lot of the older World of Warcraft um, sort of guilds, like when they'd start doing the raids and things like that, those were usually a large time commitment in terms of PvE content um, and uh, the average player base for WoW back in the day, like like a lot of like everybody's just gotten better at games over time. Um, but back then in the, like the World of Warcraft early days, man, we were all so bad. Like, <laughs> um, um, but it was <clears throat> you get like uh, because the time commitment comes in. Um, that's where you start getting like, well, are they sweaty? Like they're spending a lot of time doing it. We look back on it now and we're like, man, we didn't even use DPS rotations. What are we doing? <laughs> like, it didn't know any better. Yeah, we just clicked the buttons, dude. Like, <laughs> sometimes the bad guy fell over. Um, but uh, but you know, that's one of those examples where it's possibly more so a reflection of time commitment um, than it is the other side. And I think that in there were guilds that worked really hard to make both of those sort of mentalities exist peacefully together um through one way or another because like the um the sort of general theory at the time was that the more casual you were the the more players you needed in your roster um because you know sometimes you main tank he's just it's it's dinner time you know mum's not having him not come to dinner <laughs> and so um and so you need people to be able to be flexible in that sort of respect. respect. Um, but of course, then if you're being really serious about trying to get world firsts or anything like that, then what you do need is a, is a commitment. But that's kind of where it sort of hits that volunteer organization side of things where at the end of the day, like that's all any gaming community or guild really is, is, is just yeah. a group of volunteers unless it's something like a, like a pro team where people are actually paid to be there. But you know, Which, those are pretty rare. So sometimes your your community um, can sort of forget that fact that a lot of these roles are volunteer driven. Um, so, yeah. it, for, for example, if they're focusing on uh, a competitive uh, player base and a casual gamer comes in who's not going to focus too much on on sort of improving, but they sort of maybe. Uh, enjoyed the company of someone and accidentally felt fallen into that community. Um, they sort of want more casual events, and they they usually a couple if it's um, if it's a competitive experience um, a community. There's usually a couple casual uh, dotted in because they haven't quite mm. realised that it, they're probably not the best fit, um, mm. and they they keep asking um, community managers or your community leaders for for more casual casual events or a different sort of event than they're putting on um, and then wondering why it's not happening um, mm -hmm. and getting frustrated, uh, which can be quite a difficult situation to to deal with as a, a volunteer because you're not, whilst you want to, you know, as a all community managers want everyone to be happy within their community. Um, mm -hmm. So not being able to provide uh, a good experience for someone is, is usually quite damning, but, uh, you you sort of just need to cut uh, realize when they cut away certain certain yeah. members. Um, it's, it's the same for an example like an uh, armor mill sim. Um, someone could have got the wrong idea from watching it on YouTube. Um, oh, these really cool guys all acting as a squad. Yeah. Um, you know, take, and taking the, groups too. Yeah, like, and taking it uh, the experience um, really serious. And then they join in and then they don't realize the amount of stuff that they actually need to know to operate functionally within that community itself. Yeah, I think there's a good example um, with the, you said the um, armor stuff, like there's there's two groups that I know of that are quite different. There's um, uh, Shaq Tactical uh, who do a lot of the, um, they sort of put their motto forward as being like serious fun. So you do kind of, have to know what to do but 
once you get to that point, it's possible to relax a little bit as long as the base training is there. Uh, but then you've got other groups like um, like the ZF clan, which I'm sure everyone's seen Soviet Wombles videos, um, which are... It's a very different experience <laughs> to look at. <laughs> yeah, you, you can turn that way. So just, let's have a laugh and try and get the job done. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and at the end of the day, it's like, which group has more fun? Well, I mean, you know, we can't really tell people what their idea of fun is, right or wrong, you know? And I think it's important to, it's important for, especially with, like, community or team games, I think it is important to try to take the time to really think about what you actually want out of it, if you're going to commit to a game like that, obviously. If you're just kind of drifting through trying to find something, then that's fine. But um, if you if you're gonna sink your teeth into those sort of um, titles, I do think it is worth sitting down and seeing what you, what is available for you to find that's not in solo queue because uh, quite often the people who are in solo queue are there for a reason <laughs> um, that usually keeps them out of uh, stacks one way or another. Um, someone was mentioning squad as well. That's a really good example. Um, I think of that sort of there's a there's kind of like a minimum amount of knowledge um, that you kind of need to to sort of participate, if that makes sense. There's like a fair a fair amount, and it's one of those games where it's kind of easy to um, accidentally kick your team in the <laughs> in the ass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unintentionally by well-meaning, but it it can happen. And um, part of the the challenge there is like, do you have veterans there who just don't want to deal with new players anymore? Um, which is all well and good, but if you don't if you don't take the time to train any new players, then that's how your community dies because it just sort of um, it just you know people just churn naturally because of life. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's actually really really interesting. Uh, the idea of game developers sort of building in those um, community mm. um, building aspects through you know text boxes. So if we take um, how let loose for for a uh, oh, it's an example, like that one. <laughs> um, if we're staying on sort of the mm. squad milsim sort of stroke, and um, where they're they're all quite hard to get into, so how let loose will have a little uh, text box that says, um, "If you're a new player, only pick this role, which is rifleman, so you don't get <laughs> any choice yep. at like ha sort of helping out. You just got to shoot at stuff." Yep. Which most player, most new players going into that type of role, that they're, they're okay at shooting mm -hmm. and following orders from the squad lead. Mm -hmm. um, but when you give them like medic or something, they're not quite sure how that that yeah. role um, works on a more like high high level um, tier. Yeah. So yeah, so um, game devs, there is in like the gaming side of things, it's a little of game devs sort of helping out. Uh, new players get into the game, but then mm. um, community leaders, community managers, um, sort of helping to foster um, their sort of micro uh, cosms uh, communities within um, mm. themselves, and fostering community um, building that way as well with newer players. Um, so it you get this really interesting ecosystem where uh, these two people probably never met, but they're still working on that same core goal. Um, yeah. it sort of keeping new players around playing their favorite game yeah and it can get sort of uh, sort of wheeling it back towards the like the casual and the um uh the sort of sweaty discussion is you you'll still get like i think every game is going to have different varies or variations of those sort of players within its ranks and um, like for your hell let loose is things like that um it could be one of those ones where for example, like the artillery is a really good example. Um, it's not really very clearly demonstrated in the game that firing the artillery costs your team resources. Um, and but quite often people are like, hell yeah, man, artillery, send it, bro. Gonna blow up some people. Uh, and then they don't realize that because they're doing that, now your team can't afford tanks. Like, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, and most of the time, um, people have, I've seen people be pretty good about explaining it to the people who are on the artillery. It's like, Hey man, like you're, you know, you're, you costing are, us. Doing, you, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're doing the best you can, but you are costing us. All you have to do is build a resource node and that'll cover it. But just please go do that. Then get on the artillery sort of thing. Um, and that's when you sort of get some really strange stories coming out from like 
various um, quote unquote incident reports on communities where people are like, how come they kicked me for team killing when I was firing the artillery, my team was losing, and then these guys just came and shouted at me and told me to get off. But then they, you know, but then I team killed them because they were shouting at me and then I got banned. Like, it's one of those sort of, you know, like then everything gets real strange when that sort of stuff starts happening, I reckon. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like similar to um, in armor servers, they generally lock the pilot position in helicopters mm -hmm. because most casual people come into the game, they're just going to like fly the helicopter up and then just instantly crash it. Bring it straight back <laughs> down. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's, it's an interesting one, I guess, because there are some... Um, some of it is like tutorial content, right? Like if the, if if you have players who are sort of done with babysitting newer players and things like that, um, it can just uh, it can kind of depend on the scale of the game to some degree. Like uh, these big one, these big milsim ones, your planet sides, your armor, your hell let loose squad, that sort of thing. Um, those are big matches. Like a single match of like a single match of hell let loose or or squad is equal to like what three 32 player brackets in a, of a tournament you know like it's a lot of there's a lot of people um and so having the having the information there for people to uh sort of learn because some of those games as well they've only just come out of early access in the last year or so and so they um they sort of are relying, people who are new coming to these sort of games are relying on sort of tutorials on YouTube that are potentially years out of date and are also just potentially like, because they're a little bit more niche games, um, quite often you get a lot of channels that'll just make quote unquote tutorials for the game that starts with like three minutes of a guy talking about his channel uh, and then two minutes of basically reading the wiki, <laughs> you know, or something like that. Um, so the <laughs> yeah, hashtag, hashtag relatable content. Am I right, fam? Lit Fortnite. Um, <laughs> but uh, but the so then you end up with that sort of like that new player churn because if the new players are trying, like they might be trying their best, but the they're trying to deal with veterans who don't have the patience for them, uh, and then then the game's got to have some measure of trying to teach them how to how to play it, um, and it's it's just unfortunate that that's the sort of churn there it's kind of nice in that sort of sense that there is some you know it's um sometimes the community sort of breeds its own demise i guess um but there are certainly elements where um sort of new player retention is an interest to developers and um it can be kind of weird when you have larger scale communities like that um, because that's just how it works. I think we, I think we have that on our on our sort of sheet, like size of communities. At some point, we'll do a we'll do a cast on that if if people want to keep hearing us talk again in future. <laughs> so since we've done, uh, I guess, yeah, Milsim Squad, etc., they're all sort of sweaty basis, and then um, mm, a few true, casuals true. come in. If we flip it the other way, where it's uh, sort of a casual basis, and then you have those sweaty players that sort of come in and dominate. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I attended a game, a game night recently, um, which was Team Fortress 2. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, an old game. Um, yep. And generally the people who loved that game were, uh, while they probably didn't refer to themselves as sweaty, um, they played <laughs> the hell out of that. And all the yep. casual players have yep. never 7, really played to you. hours, <laughs> negative review. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then the, the casual players have um, generally hadn't really played TF2 before um, because they, you know, got into TF2 a little bit too late and didn't have the same amount of hours. Um, so when those uh, sweaty players came in, um, you know, your seven hours, <laughs> seven thousand hours, uh, you had sort of had where it was an annihilation of all the the new casual players and mm. it got to the point where all the uh, the majority of the players were like we don't want to play tf2 anymore yeah. you know it, yeah. it's too much of a sweaty game and we did not have fun mm. and uh sorry you, you finish oh uh, so like on the, the that community was um you know, uh, Murdoch Esports from from mm -hmm. where I am. And I would say at the time it was more a casual uh, community. Don't let the name fool you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
uh, it was a more casual community. Um, so, so the the issue there um, was uh, like the, you, the you, you, the you can't you can't gate sort of gatekeep the sweaty versus the casual and yeah. trying to split up both sides into having equally sweaty um, still didn't really give a perfect um, experience because those new players were pretty much being grinded into the ground like uh, <laughs> like a, a foot to an ant. Yeah, was that a was that an a um an in person event or just an online one? Uh, that was just online uh, yep. casual yep. games night. Yeah, yeah. See, I've done I've done a few kind of like that over the years, and generally, um, what we tried to do was we'd sort of we we our community sort of came from the idea that like a fun game is def- is sort of like it's it's got. Um, the outcome has to be in question, if that makes sense. Like, it's, you know, it's like no one likes watching the footy where it's just a blowout. Like, and you know, why bother turning up if you know which team's going to win? Um, so generally, what we'd try to do is we'd play like we'd play a match or two, and then we'd like stop and go like, "Hey guys, is everyone happy with the teams?" And quite often, most of the guys were all right. We'd have like, if someone was really, um, and if and, and if there was any concern, then we'd just like do a um, like a draft and just swap a few people around. Uh, but it was kind of funny too because the sweaty players like loved the challenge, <laughs> so like, so if the, even if they were on like the the under like quote unquote the underpowered team, they'd be like, "Nah, man, go again, bring it on!" Like, I'm ready. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking at some um, some yeah, statements chat. coming through from the chat. Yeah. So we have like that was pro saying Rainbow Six Siege is one of my favorite games. But it's so hard to get friends to play it. I usually tell them it just isn't fun for the first 10 hours. But if you fr- uh, push through, it is really rewarding. Oh, it, I think it definitely is. But I don't like the idea of trying to sell my friends on a 10-hour, like, <laughs> up, uphill slog, basically. Like, it's, um, I guess, so my, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, my main game is um, Planetside. And one of the things that I like about that game is there's no functional player limit. Uh, and everyone's on the same server, like, you know, all several thousand of us, uh, which means you don't have matchmaking, which is good and bad for all the wrong, re- right and wrong reasons. Um, but it's that same thing, like the, the same kind of advice gets given, uh, you know, oh, it's just not fun for the first hundred hours if you're a solo player, like that sort of, that game really pushes you to, um, if you're going to really try and get anything out of it, you need to connect with other people. Um, but I think that that's a, that's a really good point too. Like, you know, anything's fun with friends, you know, like if you have a game that's, um, advertised as specifically being fun with friends, that usually means it might be less fun by yourself. Um, (laughs) I kind of, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, You sort of get with like play with friends is while she may be a sweaty player, 99% of the time, if you go play with friends, you're mm. going to go there as a casual gamer, which actually sort of then gets into yeah. this weird topic of you can transition between the two, depending on where you're at. Well, I had a, well, my experience was quite interesting because um, when I started getting more into the, like before I started all the planet side stuff, like almost any interaction I had online was with people that I'd already met in, in real life. Cause I grew up in that sort of time where it was like, don't tell strangers on the internet about yourself. And <laughs> and so, uh, you know, so when I started get reaching out a little bit more with Planetside, just by necessity to get the scale of the teamwork um, that you needed, you, I found that it was it was really nice in the sense that I I was kind of finding my tribe, if that made sense. Like before yeah. that, I was that guy. I hosted the land parties. I was like, hey everyone, come to my house. We'll all play video games. It'll be great. And then everyone comes to your house, and one guy's got a broken computer. This guy hasn't got the patch. This guy doesn't own the game. This guy's got an old version of the game. This guy just really can't get his hard drive to. It's, you know, like, and then everyone leaves, and they go, man, we had a great time at your land. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, cool, I'm glad. <laughs> um, but it was really nice to uh, to sort of start to connect online with people that were a bit more like that. But it was, it was really scary at first too because you're sort of used to like, it's the internet, everyone's awful. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like um, the mentality that everything has to be perfect if it's an online. Uh, and then when it's in person, you get a little, little bit of leeway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
But yeah, I think I think what these guys are saying here in the chat with Draper and, and Pro is like the the ten hour learning curves on on a lot of games like that is a bit rough. I'm sorry, I got distracted. Um, but yeah, so that was that was sort of my experience with like um, growing from those sort of two different communities sort of thing, and it was it was good in the sense too because it was a lot better on my friends because then I wasn't that guy who was like, you know, um, every I think every group of friends who games has got like that guy who's the he's like the best of your group, but then you go online you get destroyed by because everyone online is the best of their group, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gamma says, you hate it when people just say get good. Yeah, I don't like, I don't really like get good in the sense that it's, um, uh, sorry, Morg, did I, if I interrupted you, just tell me to stop talking. No, no, go ahead. (laughs) Um, like the get good thing's always interesting because it's that same thing we were talking about a little bit beforehand where it's like the veterans are like, I'm tired of dealing with this, just get good. Uh, but I have seen times where, uh, veteran players have been really putting themselves out there to try to, um, try to help people get better or like then the most oh, yeah. egregious cases i've seen are where like okay you're playing a video game you absolutely trash some guy and they're like hey could you give me some tips on improving because i want to be you know as good at video game as you um i'm paraphrasing very heavily <laughs> and like- okay cool i'm gonna do that you know, I'm going to try and help this guy out through his little journey. And, you know, because I, I ultimately think that an educated player base is great for any game because you really start to get into the sort of, like, you're playing against the other players, you know. Like, quite often, a lot of times with games these days, you might be playing against, you. half of it is playing against the interface. You know, like, if you've ever seen, um like, competitive StarCraft, like, I couldn't do that. That's basically, <laughs> you know, that's OCD as a hobby. <laughs> but... Um, but in that sort of sense, it's the, uh, you know, you're playing against when you've got equal matched, you're playing against other people who are around the same level as you. And that's where it is enjoying. It's enjoyable because, uh, you're trying to play against another person. If that makes sense. You're like, what's he going to do? How's he going to behave? Whereas if it's like, how do am left click versus like 2000 hours, um, keyboard shortcuts other? only. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, keyboard turning only, mate. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> but Tarkov actually had a really good inbuilt system where um, you could elect yourself as a more experienced player to be a, yep. I think it was a Sherpa. Um, and then on the, once you're in game and you're about to go look for a server, as a newer player, you can, um, I believe it's built into the search bar. So, not the search bar, the, the sort of like lobby bar where um, it lists the, the Sherpas, I think. Um, I may be misremembering this slightly, but there's definitely a system pushed by the developers. Anyway, so it matches new players with a, a Sherpa who sort of takes them around and, and shows them the rope, uh, which for those of you who play Tarkov, realize that when you get in, uh, it's, it sort of feels as a new player where everything's terrifying and then all of a sudden you're just dead because someone's um, shot you in the back of the head because you don't know angles, maps where sort of you expect people and um, what you're actually meant to do when you're in the map. Mm, uh, yeah. So that, that's sort of... It's, yeah, it sucks, because uh, hey, you're sort of like, you're trying to like, you're trying to marry it, you know, because I, I don't believe that, um, I don't believe that the two mindsets are particularly exclusive either. Like you might be really good at a video game, but you've only got three hours a week to play, you know, like where do you fall on that spectrum? You know, like, oh, look, I'm master's but I can only play for three hours. Well, first off, you're a god, but, <laughs> you know, are you casual at that point? Like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but like like Gamma was saying with the, with the get good thing, like I always found it kind of um, like lazy in, in that sort of sense. Like you're trying to, okay, get good. Well, maybe you, could, you can help that person um, to some degree. And I think it does benefit you in the long run. But that does require a certain kind of um, community-focused mindset that I don't think uh, I don't think that everybody has when it comes to gaming, and I don't think that everybody needs it. Um, but it it does sort of you know then it sort of starts to turn into like, am I turning my hobby into a job? Like I just want to left click on the head, you know, and now I have to in my spare time. A trap about raised is a pretty good point where he says uh, games go through generations of players just like people. Mm-hmm. It's a responsibility of seasoned players to guide the next generation of players. Mm. If you care deeply about the health of a game, it's important to be supportive of, of new players. 
Yeah. And I think to some degree, it's, you, it, it certainly feels like that mindset's very rare, um, more or less, because quite often, like, you know, we just want games for dopamine, man. Like, <laughs> you know, um, and I can't blame people for that because it's things that they're doing in their spare time. Like, like we went, we were saying earlier, like gamers are basically volunteers when it comes to, you know, gaming and communities. Right. Um, you know, I don't think anyone, I don't want to ask anyone to do spreadsheets to on their spare time <laughs> unless um, you know unless they're like mate boy howdy let me tell you what's going on in d6 cell oh man there are some functions <laughs> you know unless they're like an eve player right <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah there's a, they're, they're at least down to f in the spreadsheet <laughs> <laughs> yeah Draffa says there are a lot of ways to educate uh there are and I think that uh, the danger can be, in some cases, I, I sort of got halfway through this story earlier and then I got distracted, I'm sorry. Um, but you can get, like, good players. You know, you go out, you, you, you do your thing, you know, everyone sees you on the MVP list and you're like, hey, how you doing? And you do get people who go, okay, hey, can you help me get better? Or I'd like to, you know, I'd like some tips on how to get better. And you try to engage on them in good faith and then they try to argue game design with you and it is frustrating because you like if you're a good player it's got nothing to do with whether or not the game is designed well or not it's are you as a player playing the game as it lies not how it could be uh but then you know and if you're trying to bring that forward to people in terms of like hey here's some things you can do to improve and they're like no why can't the game just not be like that it sort of it it does kill your enthusiasm to try to help after the fifth sixth seventh eighth time that you go through that conversation because then you start to feel like okay no one wants to try um and i think that that's uh, slamming your head against the brick wall yeah you know and i think that's kind of where we were talking a little bit earlier about how you know you get different people who come in and like games can be some people enjoy games as a vector for self-improvement um versus people who just want the dopamine and if you, you know, sometimes, you know, because if you work hard, it, it's worth more. But, hey, let me tell you, hard work pays off over time. Procrastination, instant payout, baby. You can feel good right now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you also sort of get those, <laughs> you sort of get those problems where, uh, not problems, but, you know, the players who are actually playing for a living. So um, there's two strains of this. You have, like, Pestilli, who's um, you know streaming um, Tarkov full time. Um, he, I I'm not sure if he has fun anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but, you could uh, say that about a lot of streamers sometimes. <laughs> definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, maybe playing more for uh, I don't want to say mm. playing more for the money, but just playing play, paying more for like having a living. Right, it's it's their yeah. job. Uh, and the yeah. same for like esports esports players. Uh, mm. Right. Com um, they're playing competitively, um, trying to mm. be the best they can to, to sort of earn that tournament money. Yeah. Um, and and um, that's a whole yeah. different kettle of fish yeah. that I can't wait to talk about with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. I have opinions, <laughs> but we're up to 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right when you said this. Uh, this topic, you can just get into so many different tangents, and exactly, at, at the yeah. core basis, casual versus sweaty. You're like, yeah, yeah sure, that's that's tackle. Uh, you can tackle that one. Oh yeah, easy, mate. First episode, we'll knock it out of the park. No worries, yeah. Uh, but I think, like, I guess I'll try and zero in on some kind of uh, moral. A conclusion for a better word unless you know jim can just he can just cut us off if we you know get the old hook out and oh. <laughs> um, but um the the thing i kind of think is that it is important to at least if that's kind of something that occupies your mind one way or another is it is important to figure out what you are because i i know a lot of people go oh you know i just casual i don't really care and then they lose their mind when they lose at a video game you know or like they they you know they're uh how do I put it? Their mental game is weak, as some people on the, uh, as like casters would put, put it. And I think that's kind of where people are almost lying to themselves about where they, you know, like how they interact with the games and what's important to them. Like if you get upset because you're losing, then is it the loss itself that is what's really upsetting you? Or is it like, do you feel like you could have done better? Like, 
I don't know about you, but like for me, I don't like win, lose. It doesn't matter to me as long as it's like an even contest, you know, like it's got like the, um, the, the uncertainty is there and that's what makes yeah. it worth doing. Um, no one likes being wiped the floor with, um, yeah. you, you and, want even like the inkling that there's going to be a chance that you're going to yeah. make this. Yeah. And like, while it is nice to do, to be the one doing the wiping, right. Um, Phrase, phrasing. Uh, <laughs> while it is nice to be the one who's absolutely slamming everybody, that's going to get boring surprisingly quickly. And then what do you do? You know, like it's nice to be that good, uh, but you do also, um, you, you know, you also might need something to keep you going once you get to the top of that mountain. Um, that's that's when you uh, go to look for a more competitive community to get involved. Yeah, with. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm done with Clash of Clans, man. I'm moving up. It's time for Tetris. <laughs> but yeah, that's um, I think that's kind of what's what's important in, or at least like can hopefully be helpful if that makes sense. Like it is worth trying to find um a uh, like a group of friends or a community to play play games or whatever in in ways that reflect how you enjoy them because uh, otherwise you're just going to argue with people you know like <laughs> yeah and and that's not that's not um productive or or sort of mm. fun for either side you know no. you're just getting angry and it's there's nothing wrong with playing a game either way sweaty or casual uh, mm. which sometimes the other forgets the other thinks that way yeah. um especially when you you may be so invested in winning or you're so invested in just having fun because you've finally got the kids to sleep uh <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and then, and then your outburst wakes them up <laughs> yeah so so it's okay to be a casual or a sweaty gamer and i'm mm. watching um our producer sweat now as we both <laughs> start speaking <laughs> as the camera zooms in <laughs> Um, but yeah, ultimately it's, it's okay being casual and it's okay being sweaty or competitive. Um, but ultimately you, you, you need to find a community that, um, sort of welcomes that way of thinking, yeah. um, which can be hard when you are forced to solo queue once again in Valorant <laughs> yep. and, yep. uh, that guy's just insta-locked, to uh, jet one more time and mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> all you yep. want to do is play jet. <laughs> yeah insta pick octanes <laughs> yeah they, and i think like i do i do believe that communities can coexist uh with with both types of players uh but i think it does require it does require a lot more patience from i guess both camps if that makes sense and it and and even then those communities i think they have a size limit you know like there's only so so big that they can go where that that tolerance is um is able to be extended to everybody and then after a while i, I think it kind of uh, can be a bit strained, if that makes sense. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you know that's a beautiful note to leave it on. Yeah, that's right. Quick, quick, Jim. I will never stop. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you, I, guys, who yeah, um thanks, uh, tuned in tonight. Out. Yeah. Thank you, Draffer Bat, uh, Nightbot. And that was pro for participating. <laughs> Special Nightbot's contributions tonight, man. They've been on po on point. <laughs> <laughs> Gamma as well. Yeah, uh, I'm sure I missed somebody somewhere. Oh, Bird Monster's there. Bird Monster, hello. <laughs> uh, this um, has been the yeah the first episode of the community meta. meta. It's happening at uh, seven p.m. Australian Western Time every Tuesday. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully <laughs> yes well i mean we'll find a we'll find a way we'll find a way so uh do do leave your feedback uh for the game on oz crew if you liked this if you didn't like this if this has solved your marriage or whatever sort of whatever sort of effects this podcast can have on your life uh please do let us know uh because you know it's that way we can figure out um what to do and how <laughs> yeah. it's up to the community to Make a change. <laughs> That's right. Thank back. you very much for your time, guys. And see you later. Wow. I hope you enjoyed that show. And if you want to make sure that you stay up to date with everything that Game on Oz has to offer here on YouTube, make sure you click the subscribe button. That's the best way.